a few years of like depression, self harm, and suicidal thoughts. And to admit, uh, it's not fully over yet. Last year, I went through a time when I couldn't go to school because I had a lot of anxiety and I had a lot of pressure. So, like, I, I started to have these like cold sweats. I had a bit of both. I had help, I didn't have help. I did have some, uh, some of my friends who just told me to like, or oh, just snap out of it, that kind of thing. So, I mean like, it's, it makes me think when, when they say, oh, snap out of it, it's like, there's something wrong with me. On one hand, I had certain church leaders tell me, like what you said, to snap out of it. Or there was that sense of condemnation almost. The, you're not praying enough, or you're not doing your quiet time enough, and that's why um, you're in this state, because you're so far from God. And that was very hurtful, but at the same time, um, my, I started seeing a psychologist and she was a member of my church. And she really just pulls me back to church and she's really just been a guiding light and really a blessing from God to me. Yeah, sometimes, like even in our church, you know, sometimes we think that you know, church is like the best um, people, you know, in church, the people in church are the best people to because they know about God, but sometimes they themselves, like, they don't really understand you, you know, sometimes people in church, like, when they, what they want to know is that they want to know about you, not really you, they don't want to know, you don't know about you, your situation, and if they can't answer you, they will think it from the point of view, that's why you get this, those answers, like, oh, like, I, you're not taking quite time enough, and then we're going through the emotions, we're like sad, we're like angry and then these people, they're outside, so they don't know. They're like, oh yeah, this is just, you know, teenage peer pressure, this is just uh, us going through some emotional times, but it might be much more serious than that. Like, no one other than God like, will understand totally like, how you're feeling, like mm. maybe the pain you're feeling or like, yeah, something, because like, no one has gone through the same exact situation as yeah. you. I think if you asked me this question five years ago, I would be very confused and awkward because I don't resonate with this sort of thing. I don't resonate with like what when people they talk about depression mm. and stuff like that. To me, it's like yeah, you know what you say, like mm. just just snap out of it or like you know you know cheer up. <laughs> I'll, I'll pray for you. <laughs> you know, it's like it's something that I don't understand. But then increasingly, I started to realize that hey. Um, it is what the kingdom of God is about, you know, like when it's not just about uh, like, okay, I, I tell you this is, I tell you God loves you, I tell you, I can tell you all of these things, but if I'm not willing to stick it with, through with you, then it, it means nothing, you know. I have the head knowledge that Jesus loves me. I have read the verses that say that God died for me and that he gave his life for me, mm. but that head knowledge doesn't transmit to the heart. Yeah. And in my heart, it just feels so empty and I'm so lost. And being able to recite these verses and having you recite them back to me, it just kind of feels like an exchange that doesn't really mean anything at that point. We know that God is here with us. He has a plan for us. But, mm. but really, during that situation, I think it's best for someone to just talk to you, just like listen um, to what is going on. Mm. Yeah. Mm. To acknowledge your feelings, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. I think really we keep coming back to the same point is really to uh, mean what you say, you know, mm. like God loves you, okay, God loves me, but do you love mm. me? Mm. You know? I think there is also another and another danger that we might swing to another extreme where like we care for the person mm. but we don't tell them about the love of God. Mm. And it becomes an emotional attachment where I feel a place in your heart that I know that only God can feel. Mm. Yeah. So which is why I, I, I don't want to like separate this like, okay, mm. this is the Bible and this is caring for people, mm. you know. I, I do think that that these two are one of the same and I, I do think that the only way that we can love others is by knowing that God loves us and and it takes a certain humility as well to know that I can never take the place I can never be your savior mm. I can never be the place that only God can feel inside of your heart mm. you know 
but I'm willing to journey with you because I know that God loves you mm. and I want to journey with you but I don't keep I don't stop pointing you towards God mm. I don't stop pointing you that hey it's actually God that loves you mm. I, I love you too but my love is not perfect his mm. love is mm. perfect mm. and I need to tell you every single day that God loves you mm. yeah and, and, and I, do, I think there's a very fine line in like throwing tarts at them Bible verses um, but yeah I think it takes a tremendous amount of care and concern uh, for the other person in order to to stand in that perfect place where where I'm not I'm not in both extremes you know mm-hmm.